Are there any elected government officials willing to openly and honestly address the critical climate engineering issue? Yes. Bill van der Zalm, the former Canadian Premier for British Columbia, is one. My deepest gratitude and respect to Mr. van der Zalm for granting this interview. I'm hopeful, whether you agree with him or not, it doesn't matter. I'm hopeful that the change in Washington with a very outspoken president might one day make some impact, have some effect. Many hope the same. Now, one of the Air Force generals that I mentioned to you yeah. had Trump's top campaign people and Carson's in his home in Las Vegas to educate them on this issue specifically with geoengineeringwatch.org materials. This was in January of 2016. And so far what we've seen with the administration in the last few months, we've seen not a reduction, but a massive ramp up. So right now, what we see in satellite imagery over the polar regions, over uh, the northern hemisphere continents especially, we've seen a very significant ramp up. And unfortunately, because I had hopes, as you did, uh, on the record the Trump administration appointees are openly supporting climate engineering. So openly supporting openly on the record. We already posted a, an article about that. So it, it, it unfortunately seems that we're going the opposite direction of what we had wow. hoped. So yeah. I, I would argue with Trump, whatever his, um, if, if he tried to really thwart the system, I would only pose Kennedy as an example that we had when Kennedy spoke out about the shadow government, he was dead in a week. And, and so I would, I would think that shadow government, from all the information we have, is much stronger now and what it was then. than what it was then. So anybody who really tries to fight the system uh, won't be around long. And so it's, it's hard to tell where we're heading, but it, it certainly doesn't appear to be in a good direction because we've definitely seen a ramp up, a, a significant ramp up in recent months. The allergy rate, the respiratory mortality rate, Everything we associate with these particulates is going off the scale, absolutely off the scale. I mean, it's epidemic. In Australia, we had a few incidences of um, mass, what they termed thunderstorm asthma mortality. We had 10,000 people put in the hospital in, in, in Australia from a thunderstorm because of the particulates that were coming down in that storm. Now, this is meteorologically unprecedented. For ER rooms were packed. 10,000 people put in the hospital from thunderstorm asthma in a condition that had never been heard of before. It's, it's clearly climate engineering, particulates raining down, and we're seeing this type of instance happening all over the globe now. So, I mean, they're, they're ramping up the atmospheric saturations. We're seeing global dimming. You're familiar with that term, I believe, that, that the amount of direct sunlight no longer reaching the surface, because you described in your area, you have a lot of blanket of cloud anyway. Yep. And we're seeing on satellite imagery, over once there's a blanket built up, the aerosol operations oftentimes are exponentially worse still because they're not visible anymore to those on the ground. So it's unfortunate that we yeah. seem to be heading a, a very bad direction. But I would argue you can't hide this much longer. No. There's, there's too many um, unimaginably cataclysmic repercussions happening already. And if we continue to plant seeds, people will be forced to wake soon. At least they'll have the information they need to, to yeah. understand what happened and why. What sort of resistance would, would you encounter, did you encounter, when you tried to even mention this issue? Well, I initially uh, got involved simply because uh, people were coming to me, telling me about this, and wondering and questioning if this in fact is happening, why would the politicians allow it to happen? And of course, my response has been, and rightly so, it's not the politicians, they're not even aware. They're not even aware, it's the bureaucracy, it's special interests, it's all of those bodies that you normally cannot get to as an individual that are really involved in ha making it happen. So because of that, I went to uh, the government in Ottawa under freedom of information and said, look, you've got to give me this information, what do you know about uh, chemtrails? And uh, it took about uh, two months before I got a response. And when I did, it was a 40-page report of which half the pages were completely blank and the other half had a lot of blank outs. So they didn't really give me the information under freedom as much as I had expected or wanted. But there was sufficient information to tell me that, yeah, they're aware 
they don't call it chemtrails, they call it geoengineering. Uh, they were aware, and uh, as a country, they said, or as a, as a government, they were not involved. Uh, they said, but uh, they were aware, and they knew it, was ha knew it was happening, and they were monitoring, and part of it in that respect. So it's happening, no doubt about it, but uh, you talk to people, generally, they don't have a clue, they don't seem to care. I think it takes a sledgehammer to make them aware. Isn't that part astounding? People's ambivalence to having their breathable air column contaminated, that they can see with their own eyes, and yet the, the human trait of denial to, to try to avoid any threat that's uncomfortable. It's crazy. I find women a little bit more receptive, perhaps because they're more intuitive. Yes. They seem to at least question it more so than what men might. So there's a hope there, and I try to, when I address people about it, single out the women because they will listen more so than the men do. But it's generally a problem. It's a problem. They won't listen. They don't, they see the chem, they see the clouds above them. Mind you, it's worse in your area here. This is the yes. worst area. Yes. We see it where we are, but we get a lot of cloudy weather, and it may be happening when it's cloudy and we don't see it. But um, that's amazing. We have all this stuff raining down upon them. Who knows what it's causing? Illnesses, diseases, we uh, no, I'm plant not sure. damage, all of that. It is all, all the above. Have you seen the statistic now that was publicized from the UK that dementia and Alzheimer's are the number one cause of mortality there? Number one. And we think it's at least second in the US, but the CDC is not acknowledging that. So what you describe, what must happen if we're inhaling these nanoparticulates of heavy metals and so forth, it is happening. It yeah, is happening. It is happening. And uh, I think perhaps the uh, medical profession needs to become a little more involved as well. And I don't know how we can approach them with it, but certainly there needs to be a greater awareness. So I appreciate what you're doing and I hope a lot more people find out about it and that from that we'll get some activity or some action. That's the goal, critical mass. Yeah. And what you described, the sort of stonewalling you got from the ministries in Canada trying to get information, our attorneys in the US with Freedom of Information Act to National Weather Service, NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and Department of Commerce, all of whom are involved in the programs according to official documents, in their FOIA to request any information on any weather modification programs going back to 1971, we just got a response that said they are completely unaware of any sort of climate modification, weather modification, while we have 300 publicized programs every single year in the U.S. So they basically completely stonewalled us and, and taking a position that they don't know anything about anything. And I mean, this is, it's, it's absurd at face value because we have, again, 300 plus publicized programs in the U.S. every year. It's no secret. People know weather modification, cloud seeding is going on. They denied all of that as well. So like, when you have official agencies that are uh, literally slamming the door on your fingers, and how many people within those agencies just to secure their paychecks and pensions are going along with that? And you experienced that as an official, correct? Yeah, we. I, I guess we get a little bit more, uh, we're a little bit more receptive up north from yes. what you are here, perhaps it's the weather, I'm not sure. But we do get a bit of a response, and the, the fact that the government would send me a 40-page report, even though half the pages were blanked out completely, and others partially, uh, the fact that they provided me this information and acknowledged, yes, they were, they were aware, it's geoengineering, it's happening, it's, of course, they don't call it global warming anymore, it's climate control, that sounds a lot better. Or climate change. And they, climate like, like change. Say, and we saw that term implemented in 1998, because up to that point it was global warming. In 1998, when we had the warmest year ever recorded, and the climate engineering, geoengineering programs were ramped up, they knew they would be causing massive weather whiplash. And you've seen this weather whiplash where you're at too, have you not, where you have temperatures spiking to very high temperatures and dropping down uh, 40, 50 degrees in a day. You've seen this in Canada as well, correct? Yeah. We're seeing it all over the world. So in order to get the population to accept that sort of scenario, that weather whiplash scenario as being, quote unquote, just a part of the cycle, they coined the term climate change instead of global warming so that 
uh, it would mask the effects of the climate engineering operations to some degree. Does that yeah. make sense? So yeah. uh, this is the this, this sort of cover up we've seen and with uh, we have a in the U.S. I'm not sure you, if you're aware we have a, a an illegal federal gag order on all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees. So you you have a a gag order on the weathermen, if you will. And if shouldn't that be a massive red flag? And we see even in, in Canada has Canada, Australia, and the U.S. are laying off and cutting back with their frontline researchers in in countless arenas, and that helps them to reduce the amount of potential leaks, if you will. Yeah. So we're seeing that across the board as well. Yeah, it's, um, it's scary that so many people are unaware, and I, I appreciate what you're doing, Dane. I think that certainly will help, and uh, we'll try and introduce the material that you have in Canada as well as we can, because it's basically, it's two countries, but it's one. It is one. We're, the, we're, yeah. It's one plan. What they're well. what they're doing uh, affects us all. On a final note, I, I want to express my deepest gratitude for the courage you've shown. And if we had more officials, elected officials that had your courage, I would argue would not be in this mess to begin with. So my deepest gratitude for your willingness to make your voice heard in this most critical battle. Thank you. Thank you.